As I started my research into the Aboriginal culture and history, I found myself asking the question, what is the dream time really? In most narratives, the dream time is the cosmogenesis, or creation time or beginning, often referred to as the primordial time of the Aborigines. Yet most narratives I came across would claim that all of these stories were in some way connected. There was a grand order to it all, or some grand plan. One stated they all shared in the same dream time. Another entirely said that each tribe held a different piece of it, like it was some puzzle grafted over the course of millennia and still managing to slip together seamlessly. But they were all always connected. This just wasn't true. There are about 500 tribes in Australia, and each of them have a different story they'll tell you, especially when concerning the dream time. So what was happening was most probably, well, I think at least, each of these writers had read a different version of the dream time from different tribes. But somewhere they had also read, as I had, that the dream time was a myth, shared and accepted among all tribes. It was some way they all knew of it, at least. However, it shows the um, sweeping and generalization attitude often found among journalists in mythology, and in many other histories or records open to interpretation, of course. We like to generalize and romanticize stories to make them more appealing. It's, it's in human nature to do so. But romanticization is dangerous in the context of history. Adding fluff, prettiness or grandness to a story might heighten its appeal, of course, but you will always have to sacrifice some part of its truth. Which is why I really watch historical films. Not because they are bad stories, but because they are wrong stories. But getting back to my research on the Aborigines, I realized quickly I'd found myself in a very interesting echo chamber where people were not necessarily taking stances on opinions, but rather parroting poorly researched sites who were parroting poorly researched blogs who had picked up their research from an outdated book in the library about ten years ago. I'd fallen into this trap myself once or twice. It's very easy in the internet. Because information is so readily available, we don't always do our own research. With all this in mind, I finally asked myself the question, what is the dream time really? came up with a very interesting answer, but to understand the dream time, we first need to look at the origin of the word itself. The first written work concerning the dream time comes out in 1896, when B. Spencer and F. Giren went to study the Aborigine. There they learned the world al Cheri, among the northern Arunta people, and translated and coined the term dream time or dreaming, claiming it held a correlation with the creation of the world. The word was synonymous with both the mundane action of dreaming and what we call today as the Cosmogenesis dream time. However, Pastor C. Strulo, a man who had lived among these people for decades and who was called an authority on the language, contradicted Spencer and Gillen, saying they were misinterpreting the word Alchiri and that it was a corruption of another word and that Alchiri itself instead meant God. Despite the controversy, the term still persisted in academic papers and was eventually accepted by anthropologists. Whether this term at that time existed among other tribes is difficult to say. Studies into the Aborigines were not, were not as alchemy or uh, common in that time and space. However, it must be noted that every tribe does seem to have a different name for that time. And they also have a different interpretation of those first days or well, the primordial time. They are not universal at all. The Aborigine stories are very unique. They are very, they are as varied as snowflakes. This has left many scholars uncertain on a wide range of stories. And the Aborigines, unlike the Greece or the Romans or the Egyptians or Celts, there is no system of consistency. Even within tribes, the narrative might contradict one another and no true order can be found. To give you a sort of glimpse into the complexity of the dream time, I will show you some belief systems held by the Aborigines. In the TV, the dream time was called Palaniri, and the Palaniri was divided into the three distinct phases. The Howard from southeastern Australia believe in what they call the All Father. This being went by the name of Bunjul, Mungan, Guana, and many other names that I will not try to butcher. <laughs> However, not enough is known about them, but it is kind of accepted that the All Father was the creator of these people. The Okol group, in turn, believe that the ancestral time came to an end when the ancestors changed themselves into birds, animals, and other entities that we see today. This is just a touch of how complicated these stories can get. But even during this unblemished, and I use the term loosely, tribes of the 1800s, it was still a struggle to find sense in it all, as you can just imagine. 
Couple this with the innate secrecy and fiercely protected rites and rituals kept in place by these tribes, getting the real story from them was nearly impossible, and what we were left with were pieces and parts that never quite fit together. And from that, we tried to bring order. Despite the uncertainty, studies in 1896 are still the most accurate, the most pure form we will ever see of the Aborigines. Western culture has influenced them, history has uprooted them, and even today their stories are spoiled and tainted by more and more we pour into them. It's tragic that in a time we could have understood them best, when their culture was at its most pure, we chose instead to push our own narratives and ideals onto them, and in our own persistence to bring a sort of order to their stories, we ended up giving them our own, and they sort of accepted it. Because today, the word Dreamtime is synonymous with Aborigine, and many of the tribes have enfolded it into their legend. So the question I think I should rather be asking then, is the dream time real? I suppose in today's context, yes, it, it is real. At one point it didn't exist. At one point that word was never truly part of the Aborigines. But it has grown with them and it has become a part of them. So yes, it does exist. And in all honesty, it is a damned nice term to use when describing the earliest world of the Aborigines. However, this is not a problem we can isolate in tribal nations or older sort of anthropology. We see this in a wide range of mythological stories and narratives. And today, an odd trend seems to be emerging where changing myths and fairy tales to fit in with our lives and ideals or beliefs is accepted. It's a dangerous road to take. I'd rather go with the idea than rather than changing a story, it, learn from it before you change it. Understand it before you damn it. There is life and lessons in these stories we can never have back once we reject the original. Especially when it comes to oral traditions. They were written in a time long forgotten. Accepted. And it's unfair to the people who lived then to change what they held dear, what they believe and what they remembered as truth. It is unfair to change these stories to fit in with our beliefs and our politics and our lives because they were never ours to change to begin with. Even today we seem to convince ourselves otherwise. However, this is just my thoughts on the matter. What's yours?